Hello everybody! Welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We're going to be painting this beautiful cardinal sitting on a branch scene. Um, so grab your materials and the first thing that you're going to want to do is sketch out your cardinal. I just did this um, ahead of time but the best thing to do if you're not comfortable with sketching out um, birds or animals or anything in general you can just look up a picture on the internet of a cardinal and either go off of that or um, trace it onto your piece of paper. Um, just do that first because it's going to be a lot easier to paint your cardinal um, when we start painting the details. But once you have it sketched out, we're going to first paint the background of the piece of paper. So uh, I kind of had this vision in my head of what I wanted this to look like. And I guess we'll see how it turns out <laughs> when it's done. But you're going to take a mop brush. And I've chosen this sort of nude pink color. But you can use whatever color you want. I know that um, a blue background would also look really nice. Um, and you're just going to be basically applying a very uneven wash to the background and you can vary up the um, intensity and the colors and the shades and whatnot. Um, you don't even have to cover the entire thing. Like here I've added a really intense uh, pink color. Um, you're just kind of doing whatever you want and the reason being we want the background to be very washed out and very abstract in comparison to our cardinal that is going to be very very detailed and it's okay if you go over your cardinal by the way with the paint like i'm slightly overlapping in some areas and that's completely okay um this is because we are going to be obviously going over it in detail afterwards after we're done the background so it's okay if it's uh if you go over it and the reason why i'm adding these pink highlights i guess is because my branches are going to have a lot of cranberries on them um, and i want the cranberries to stick out a little bit with this pop of color so that's why I'm adding those in random areas. And I've drawn out my branches here as well, so I, I have a rough idea of where my cranberries are going to go. Or, did I say cranberries? I actually don't know what the berries are on these trees. They're definitely not cranberries. You know those, those really red, beautiful berries that grow on trees in the winter? I don't know what they're called. But that is what I'm trying to paint. Like I said, the background is very, very abstract, so don't worry too much about being hyper precise. I'm just adding some red on top of some of my pink accents. They are perhaps a little bit too intense for what I wanted, but that's okay. We can fix that a little bit. It 
if you want, you can sort of create that, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the word, so I apologize if I'm saying this wrong, but the bokeh, like the B-O-K-E-H effect. Um, and maybe that's not even the same effect. So, um, but that effect where there are these like perfect solid colored circles that um, sometimes appear in a picture when there's uh, like a high contrast or there's a lot of detail. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Um, I don't really know how to explain it, but you can definitely add some of those circles in. I haven't actually done a tutorial on that because I've never, I don't ever recall painting that before, but perhaps I might do that in the future, a tutorial, because I, I think those look really nice. The, the kind of circular, very um, prominent circular details. And I'm even painting some sections different colors, and this is totally okay, like you can do that. There's this one section here that's, um, it has the tail of the cardinal, and I kind of painted it this plum color, and that's totally okay. Um, I might paint this section another color. I kind of like the very dark plum colors coming out in this section and that's because I accidentally mixed in some black watercolor but that's okay I like that look I like it I might add it down here as well Okay, so I think my piece of paper is mostly dry. Cotton dries very, very slowly, so I do feel that's a bit damp, but um, I'm gonna try and work with this. And I'm gonna flip my piece of paper over so that it's easier for me to draw my branches because that's what we're going to be uh, painting first. So I can, I can still kind of see the branches that I penciled in earlier. Um, so just keep in mind when you're painting your, uh, when you're uh, drawing in your branches with pencil um, to really, I don't want to say press hard, but don't, don't paint them on too lightly. And you could also just redraw them after you've painted your background. But I'm just taking my size 14 brush here uh, because my branches towards the bottom are a little bit thicker. And I'm just painting them on following the the little guides that I sketched out for myself. To achieve this brown I just mixed my very generic light brown with black to get this more intense uh, color because we are going to be painting those red berries and I do want the berries to pop off of the page. Actually, before I move on to the next branch, I'm just going to add some more detailed pieces coming off of these. So here I'm using my size double zero Windsor and Newton. I like this one because it's a little bit longer than the quadruple zero, so I don't have to reload my brushes often with pigment but the quadruple zero would work really well for this as well, and I'm sure that I'll actually switch to it in a second. Um, while you're painting on the more detailed branches, be mindful of where you're going to be painting on the red berries later on. If you have some 
kind of more bare patches in the painting. Perhaps that's where you can paint on the berries, but then you have to have branches leading to those bare patches. I'm going to go a little bit closer here so you can see in more detail how I'm painting these guys. Okay, so once you've painted on all of your branches, we are going to paint on our little red berries. Um, the best part, in my opinion. So I'm just uh, taking my round brush again, super versatile brush, and I am loading on my red watercolor. And we're just going to be painting these little, um, spe not, I wouldn't call them specks but little dots uh, for the red berries and you can make them as sparse or as clustered as you would like them to be. And you can see that those kind of uh, pinkish areas that I highlighted in the background, they overlap with um, some of the branches where I'm painting the little clusters of berries. And not every single branch has to have these berries. Just use your discretion. Some of them I'm making a little bit bigger than the others. Again, just to add some variation. Okay, so now that we've painted our berries, we are going to paint our cardinal. Um, so I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Uh, we're going to apply a red wash to most of our cardinal just try to avoid the beak and kind of the black area around the face um, but other than that just fill the entire cardinal in with red watercolor and then later on we can um, go over kind of highlighting i would also recommend waiting until all your berries are completely dry because Mine aren't, and now I'm trying to avoid them so that I don't smudge them. You can flick your paintbrush up like that to create the cool little afro that uh, cardinals have. And it gives it a more natural look that way.
So that's sort of the majority of our cardinal. I left this wing because I'm going to be using more of a plum red or maroonish red for the wing. Uh, and honestly, you can just add some black if you don't have this color. And then if you add some black to the red, it'll achieve a similar result. But we want to layer our wing. So the wing is sort of split into a, a few different sections. You have the upper section, which, which I'm trying to paint right now. And it ends there, sort of. And then you have the slightly lower section. Which is, it ends just below it, like around here. And then you have the final section. And the final section, that's where the wing actually kind of um, flares out beyond the body of the cardinal. So you could definitely use your rounded brush to swipe out the wing. Kind of like that. And just below the wing, if you can see, still see your penciled out area, you want to create that area a little bit darker because um, it is essentially, uh, there's a shadow being created from the wing. So it's going to be around here and we're gonna fix that in a moment because obviously that by itself like that doesn't look that great um, we're gonna flare some of that out and part of our wing because I didn't uh, didn't paint that top portion because it's technically supposed to be separate it a little bit like so and this you don't want to fade out that shadow Okay, so we've got the main body of our cardinal finished, um, and I'm I'm sort of happy with that. I'm gonna go in with detail work in a second. We just have to finish this area here. Um, I'm just worried that if we paint on the black, that it's going to bleed into the red, which we of course want to avoid. So instead, what I'm going to do is just paint the beak, and the beak is going to be an orange red color so you can take some of your existing red and mix a little bit of orange into it and I'm going to flip this like this I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. So our beak is going to be a lot darker towards the uh, inside and it's going to get lighter as we go towards the, the um, sharpest point. And 
I'm even taking a little bit of yellow on my paintbrush and just adding it because it will blend into a really nice orange color. And we almost want to leave that top white. I got a little too much yellow there, but that's okay. Okay, now we're going to just go in with the black details around here. And we're going to leave a very small white circle. That's going to be the eye. Um, And we can also paint in our legs in uh, using black watercolor. <laughs> These kind of remind me of uh, in Harry Potter, the claws of the Dementors. I think I anticipated my branch to be a lot thicker, which is why these are sticking out so much and I should have adjusted for that, but you know what? We are gonna fix that. And you know how we're gonna fix that? We are going to improvise by painting a branch. coming out this way. So my, I don't know if my storage was full or what, but my camera just turned off. Um, we're gonna be painting the details of the uh, cardinal right now, like on the base or the, the body there. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out how I'm gonna be doing this because it's my first time painting a cardinal. So, uh, do, do, do. 
I'm trying to figure out whether I want to do like the wet on wet technique again or just focus on the details. But I think I am just going to focus on the details. So we're going to be defining a lot of things here in this specific layer. So here, for example, this and this section, I want them to be slightly different colors because uh, they're slightly um, different sections of the bird. And I'm also just going to add some extra fluffs coming out the top. Like that. Give our little birdie man a special afro. <laughs> a little more darkness here just to define that section that I was talking about. There we go. There's a little more texture there. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there are sort of three sections to our wing. And I'm going to be defining those in just a moment. I'm going to do the rest of the body first because it's easier to do it that way. Um, So this section, okay, actually, I do know what I'm going to do now. Take a little bit of my black. So this top section of our wing is going to be much darker than the other ones. So I'm just going to fill that in now with some uh, black highlights or lowlights. <laughs> and I'm not making it a perfect line, as you can see. I want it to be rough. Something like this. Okay. And then this, the belly, is going to be much brighter. So I'm using. Uh, a red that doesn't have any black mixed into it. It's just nice and bright. And I'm going to add a little bit of black here at the bottom where the tail is starting because this part is supposed to be sort of underneath the bird so we are going to have some shadows starting there and then continuing on along the base of the tail There we go. And we also want to add some of those shadows where the base of the uh, wing is, just like this. And that's a lot more subtle than the first time we did it. So that looks much, much more natural. And then we want the top of our of our uh, tail here to be that bright red again. So I'm gonna clean my pr brush, pick up that bright red, and apply it. I know I'm sort of twisting my paper every which way. Uh, feel free to do the same, it's just easier for me to paint in certain angles. There we go. And I want a little bit more black down here. I'm not too happy with 
shading sort of disappeared on us, so I'm just going to add that black back. Like so. And then a little bit here as well, to that top part of our wing. That's quite nice. I don't know what you guys think, but I, I like that. Okay. I think that first section should have been a bit longer. There. Okay. So now we're going to paint the second part of our wing. Um, and it's going to sort of come up to here where you see these white highlights. And we're gonna grab our bright red again with a little bit of maroon added in this time. And we're gonna paint that over top. And that the darkness from that first section is hopefully going to bleed into it a little bit. And we're going to extend that second section into the third section, like so. And then pick up some black and transition that into, into the tip of the, the wing. We're just gonna have to, mm, I'm debating whether we should let this dry or start adding the white highlights with acrylic paint now. Uh, I think I might just add it now. It'll help blend it into the background a little bit better. So you don't have to do this part. This part is optional, but I think it really defines uh, the wing of the cardinal and really adds a lot of really nice detail. So I'm just taking white acrylic paint here and a detail brush, and I'm just going to start defining uh, just random features of, of the bird here. So I'm going to start off with adding some highlights at the tufts of the um, little afro hairdo thing we gave him. And I'm just flicking my uh, paintbrush downwards. And I'm even going to, remember that section I mentioned earlier that I wanted to section off? So I'm just bringing that down a little bit like so. And there's some highlights just coming off of the and a belly portion, not the belly, but the upper, almost belly. So I'm just adding some white highlights there and blending them in a little bit. Like so. And we, you know, we, we want this to look like fur, not this perfect, uh, painted canvas, right? So this is where we can kind of even start defining all of the individual feathers. Did I say fur earlier? I definitely meant feathers. <laughs> so I'm just uh, basically painting on these curved sweeps. Uh, or swoops coming downwards in sections 
and the, it kind of makes it look like individual feathers that have been painted on. And, and we're gonna have really long ones that are extending all the way down. And I would definitely recommend actually doing this if you're, if it, uh, while the, the bird is still wet because it allows that white to blend in with the red and not be so harsh. So it looks much, much more natural this way. Just going to, I think, add, since I have the white acrylic paint here, I'm going to add snow uh, just to the, some of my little branches and, and the uh, berries that we've painted. Um, this is definitely optional. You don't have to do this, but I do think that anything with a little whimsical sprinkle of snow it just makes the whole scene really magical because i think a lot of us associate um winter time or cardinals with winter time so a nice snowy landscape contrasting the beautiful red of the bird i think will really add to our final uh painting the last thing that I'm going to do here is take um, some of this white acrylic paint and water it down quite heavily so that I can create snow. And kind of make the whole scene come together in this beautiful, magical, mystical, snowy world. And I would say that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.